In this video, I'm showing you how my client, John, turned this dumpy, tired kitchen into this beautiful, stylish new kitchen. And get this, it only cost him $12,000 and there was no DIY work involved whatsoever. Except that admittedly, John did install the window blinds himself, which you'll see, but other than that, no DIY whatsoever. So if you want a new kitchen, but you don't want to spend four months learning how to hang cabinets and sand and paint and all that kind of jazz, this is a video for you because this is a $12,000 no DIY kitchen renovation. My name's John Schwartz. I'm a real estate agent, a real estate investor, also a house hacker. If you want to learn more about house hacking, check out my channel. I have all sorts of videos on it. I really think it is the smartest way to get the best bang for your buck when you're buying a home especially if you're a first-time home buyer. <gasps> However, number two bang for your buck is a kitchen remodel like the one John pulled off. So I'm gonna let John lead us on a tour of his kitchen. I'm gonna interrupt that tour at certain moments to hammer home the lessons that we can draw from John's kitchen renovation, and they are plentiful. And then stick around to the end because John shares some art that he's hung on the walls that's pretty unique and pretty funny. And then I'm gonna tally all the costs and we're gonna come up with our grand total and I guess I've already kind of like spoiled this video by telling you it's under 12 grand, but it's still pretty impressive to see tallied up. So without further ado, let's get into the tour. Hi, I'm John. We're in Pasadena, California, and this is my kitchen. This specific kitchen required essentially no DIY work. I mean, I, I installed the new window treatments. I clean it once in a while, and that's about it. So structurally, the kitchen is essentially as it was. We've just made updates to various surfaces to make it feel more coherent, and more modern, and more livable. The work done on the cabinets themselves was relatively minimal. It was just a fresh coat of paint and new uh, cabinet poles. Okay, lesson number one. This is the most important lesson of kitchen renovations. Keep the wood cabinets. If you're a home buyer and you're looking at homes and you see a dumpy kitchen, but it has wood cabinets, buy the house. Old wood cabinets are great because you can sand them and paint them and huabo, they look like new. We fell in love with these pulls from Rejuvenation, but they were 40 bucks each or something like that. So we found these Chinese knockoffs on Amazon for 30 bucks for 30 pulls. <laughs> okay, lesson number two, and this one's really important. Browse highbrow, but shop the bargain bin. What this means is when you're looking for inspiration, when you're trying to find the exact pulls you want, or even the hinges you want, any kind of hardware you want, shop at the expensive places, the rejuvenation, the restoration hardware, the places that you could never afford to buy, for example, $40 pulls. But then once you see the product that you love, go to Amazon and find it at a much cheaper price. It's gonna take a second to find these products on Amazon. First, you wanna search the product name, you wanna scroll down and look at the section that says customers also bought and has some other suggestions. Then you wanna search for the product's shape or other words that you think uh, people selling that product may have titled the product on Amazon. And it might take a little digging, but I guarantee you'll find a product very much like, if not exactly the same as the product that you loved at the much more expensive store. The bottom cabinets stayed more or less in their original configuration. We did put in a drawer microwave that required a little bit of embellishment around the edges to get it flush. There was kind of a vacancy next to the stove. The stove was the wrong size for the space, so we had the contractor build a bookcase where we keep all of our cookbooks and leftover wine from our wedding. The counters that we inherited had four by four original tiles with thick stained grout lines and it was a little bit eh. So we opted for uh, more modern but still timeless-ish quartz. Lesson number three, replace the countertop. Replacing the countertop is relatively inexpensive and it gives the kitchen a whole new look, a whole new life. We found initially the tiles online, which were Bedrosian tiles, and we were gonna go with a different course. But when we were in the showroom, we were able to hold one up next to the other and see how nicely they married. So we ended up getting everything from Bedrosians, and we also ended up purchasing it on like some holiday special. We ended up getting 30% off uh, everything. Lesson number four, match the backsplash to the countertop for additional savings. Keep in mind that people who sell tile and stone, the prices are listed, but they're not super, super fixed. And you can usually negotiate the price down a little bit by bundling things together. Oh, and here's a lesson. There's a button right under this video. It's like a thumb up. It's the like button. Give it a click. So the original sink that we had was an old school drop-in divided into two small unusable section sink. And it was really important to us to have one 
large sink. We do a lot of cooking. We do a lot of entertaining. So stainless interior of the sink. And then we went with this kind of like brushed brass thing just to, you know, pick up on all of the other accents. We got it on Amazon. <laughs> okay, lesson five, renovate for you. John and his wife, they wanted a deep sink. So they went and found the biggest, deepest sink they could fit. It's your house, renovate for you. We were heading in like a vaguely eclectic tiki-ish vibe for some of the other spaces. So we got these reed blinds on Amazon. They were super duper cheap. I think they look pretty nice. Reminder, shop at Amazon. The original floors were linoleum. They were not in awesome condition. I think they also have like asbestos as the, the main adhesive, which was I don't know if it's problematic, but it's questionable. We decided that we wanted to replace the original floors with something a little bit more modern and neutral and easy to clean. So we ended up opting for this click lock vinyl thing that has a stone-ish finish that's kind of neutral and disappears into the background. It was also incredibly cheap. We got it from Floor and Decor, where I did not expect to be like blown away by the quality of floor or decor, but uh, it fit the bill. So here we are. Lesson number six, vinyl plank flooring. It's very inexpensive. It looks amazing. It's extremely durable. If you're renovating a home and you need new flooring in the kitchen or the bathroom or even through the whole floor, pro tip, look up vinyl plank flooring. I have also always wanted a runner in our kitchen, which was a point of discussion. Uh, but we purchased this thing from Ruggable, so I knew that, you know, a good amount of the floor was going to be covered up anyway. So we just kind of wanted it to fade into the background. Lesson number seven. Be creative instead of being expensive. John paired really inexpensive flooring with a relatively inexpensive runner to come up with a super cool look for his kitchen. Why is there a couch here? Great question. <laughs> a lot of people have a little table in their kitchen, which is totally cool and makes a lot of sense. Uh, we've noticed when we host, people tend to congregate in the kitchen. It's a galley kitchen, so there's not a ton of room which basically results in me asking people to leave. So we decided to take this cushy, big, uh, chill couch and put it here. That way when we have friends over, we can crack a bottle of wine. They can hang on the couch. We can have a conversation. I'm not getting mad because they're in my way. So kitchen couch is the way of the future. Lesson number eight, be creative instead of being typical. Instead of finding like a breakfast table to put in this nook, John and his wife put a nice big comfy couch in this nook, which is Super cool. It makes this part of the kitchen really comfy, really inviting, and it's just something you don't see every day. I found out that LG makes a fridge, the only fridge that produces spherical ice cubes. So we got this fridge almost exclusively because it produces almost perfect spherical ice. We just ended up getting a matching uh, dishwasher, which is great. This was the stove that we inherited from the previous owner. It totally works. It looks totally fine. At some point it'll give up and we'll get something a little bit fancier, but riding it out with this guy, uh, because why pay extra if the thing still works? Lesson number nine, inherit the appliances. A great renovation includes appliances that are good enough that you can clean them up and keep using them. Yes, obviously, if you're obsessed with spherical ice, then buy a fridge that makes spherical ice. But there's nothing better than a rundown kitchen with decent, good appliances that still work. So the thought behind the drawer microwave was the previous folks had a large microwave right here. It consumed such a significant amount of counter space in such a small kitchen that it was not the most utilitarian use, I guess, of that space. So we decided to splurge a little bit, uh, get this drawer microwave. Okay, lesson number 10. And you think the lesson's gonna be be smart with your space, but that's kind of obvious. Really the lesson here is if you're a home buyer, when you're looking at homes, don't let the seller's bad use of space blind you to what's possible. It is very likely that some other buyers looked at this condo and saw this big microwave on this countertop and thought, oh, this kitchen has no room. What John did that was so smart is he realized, hey, if we put the microwave under the countertop, then I have all the countertop I need to make a real chef's kitchen out of this small galley kitchen. So lesson 10, don't be blinded by the seller's bad use of space when you're looking at properties. So they have a broad range of drawer microwaves and they're all branded with different brands. But the guy at the store told me, Sharp makes all of the guts of all of the microwaves and they're essentially identical. So we got the cheapest one you can get because the guts are the same apparently, as the best ones you can get.
Lesson 11, product research. Definitely research the expensive products you need to buy so you can make sure you're getting the most for your money. So a few other adjustments we made were replacing the original light fixtures. They were cool, but they were in very, very bad condition. We got a matching uh, brass and white ceiling fan. Uh, we also got a, a recessed range hood uh, up above the stove because the prior range hood was quite large and very inefficient. High volume range hood, if you're like actually gonna cook, is a must. Lesson 12, invest wisely. What John did here that was so smart is he recognized that the oven was just fine as it was. The problem was the range hood. So instead of buying a new oven, he just got a new range hood. I love old art and old advertisements, especially Southern California oriented stuff. So I've collected over time a pretty significant number of those. They're not very expensive. They look really cool. Lesson 13, become an art collector in a genre that's not very expensive. That's my wife. That makes art collecting fun, affordable, and pretty soon you'll have some great pieces to put up on your walls. A kitchen is actually a great spot for art. Lesson 14, couldn't have said it better myself, a kitchen is actually a great spot for art. So my wife is a marathon runner. This is a 1986 marathon promotional thing, and it really complements the space. So stoked about that. Um, these are two pieces that I picked up at flea markets like over the past 10 years. So the top one is a Maxfield Parish print, and it's a little boy looking at this island, which I thought was just like a really cool uh, kind of imagination inspiring vignette. Uh, and then the bottom one is an old advertisement for Southern California as a place to shoot movies. Because Southern California is so ecologically diverse, you could shoot stand-ins for places all around the globe because we've got deserts, we've got mountains, we've got beaches, we've got whatever. So this is a, an illustrated map of Southern California with suggestions on where you would shoot different environments, including rural England, French Riviera, Ireland, Holland, Flanders. <laughs> all right, so that's uh, John's tour with 14 really valuable lessons for your own kitchen remodel. Now let's go over the itemized pricing to see how we get to $12,000 for this kitchen. First, we have the labor, which is actually the largest line item of the whole ordeal. Uh, John's contractor charged him $6,840. Now this was to install everything, as well as build the new bookcase next to the stove, lay the new countertop, lay the new tiles, and this price included the wood that was needed for the new bookcase and for the trim around the microwave. Item number two, the pulls, which cost $1 each, or as John mentioned, $30 for 30 pulls. Next item, the subway tiles over the quartz slab. Now the subway tiles cost $7.12 per square foot. The quartz slab cost $33.01 per square foot. The total for both with tax and everything was $2,839. The sink basin cost $199. The faucet cost $249. The blinds cost $86 for the small blind over the sink. $129 for the larger blinds near the couch. So together they cost $258. The flooring was $2.79 per square foot or $628 for the whole kitchen. The runner cost $209. The light cost $170. The fan cost $319. Of course, the couch was already owned and the art was already owned. So the grand total comes to $11,820 for this beautiful and stylish kitchen. Small caveat, I did not include the appliances in this total, mostly because John bought a really expensive refrigerator. In reality, the goal is to inherit all of your appliances from the seller and swap them out over time. So sans appliances, this was your $12,000 kitchen that required no DIY work. Again, except of course that John hung the blinds and I would imagine he hung the artwork too. For more videos about the housing market and buying smart, subscribe.